Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. Good morning, and welcome back to St. Mary's. After seeing, after seeing the uh, funeral of Prince Philip yesterday, we look positively packed, don't we? <laughs> we really do. Uh, welcome back. It's lovely to see faces again. I know I've bumped into many of you on my walks around over the last few months, but uh, some of you are particularly further afield. Uh, great to see you, and um, hopefully we can have a distanced chat afterwards, although I'm reminded I'm not to encourage people to loiter after the service, health and safety. Uh, a few notices, if I may, a reminder that for the next few weeks now, four Sundays, we're going to be at 10 o'clock. We're just slowly introducing services. That will lead up to Pentecost Sunday, the 23rd of May, and on the 23rd of May, our plans are to have a 9 o'clock inside service and a 10.30 outside service. So we'll start slowly uh, thinking about how we go forward. More about that in the uh, weeks to come. Over the following few weeks as well, we are continuing with a fellowship meeting at half past 10 on Zoom for those who can't make it or those who don't want to be here. So Eileen is very graciously looking after that for us over the next few weeks. Uh, thank you again to everybody who helped whilst I was away, or sort of notionally away anyway. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for being here. And thank you for get, keeping the show on the road. So it's, uh, it's been encouraging to have positive feedback. So thank you for that. A few other things. Uh, we are revising the electoral roll for the annual meeting on the 26th of May. I think everybody's name should be on the electoral roll. If you want to check it, though, there is a copy at the porch, or probably better still, because of COVID and not having to touch surfaces, better if you were to phone up Andrew Alexander if you were really concerned that your name wasn't on the list, please, or just ring me and I'll let you know. And then one final thing, the service this morning is being recorded to go onto the YouTube channel tomorrow. So for most of you, it won't matter, but for anybody coming to the front, your faces might be on uh, the recording. So if you do come to the front and you've got any concerns about that, please let me know and we'll pixel you out or do something like that, okay? So great to have you back with us and we're going to have a moment of quiet uh, as we turn to God in our prayers. The risen Christ offers us redemptive love and forgiveness and so we focus our thoughts on this truth as we come before God in worship. A moment of quiet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I'm going to move straight to the invitation to confession. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Top of page five. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. 
Amen. So may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So if you're able, let's stand together for the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we stand, we continue in prayer in the collect. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please do sit down as Jude comes to read for us. The first reading is taken from Acts chapter 3. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead, To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. If you would stand for the gospel, please. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. While the eleven and their companions were talking about what they had heard, 
Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why no doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words that I speak and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. It's good to be back and it's good to be here standing in that blank spot again, aren't I, where the reception isn't picking up. Uh, I was... I'll I'll try my best. Can you... Oh, it's going to go all the time, isn't it? Okay. Is that better? Okay. It's great to be back in the Easter season because the Easter season is about a new beginning and we come here today and we have a new beginning coming back into church. So let's pray that God will indeed bring us to that new beginning. And in a strange way, Prince Philip's death and his burial yesterday might signify to us some sort of change, some sort of looking to the future. Uh, I'll leave that for you to ponder. Today we have those readings, very well-known readings, from the Acts of the Apostles and from Luke's Gospel. And there are a number of words from Luke's Gospel that I would just like to read to you this morning where it says this, The disciples thought they had seen a ghost, but Jesus said to his disciples, Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have faith and bones, as you see I have. So this resurrected Jesus was something different, but he was also something or someone who was recognisable. But these disciples were terrified. There's an old Scottish prayer. Margaret, you might remember this prayer. It says this, From goodies and ghosties and long-legged beasties and things that go bump in the night, good Lord, deliver us. I wonder how many of us have prayed that in the past. Uh, The thought of ghosts are quite frightening, aren't they? The talk of spirits and spiritual things. Uh, We don't understand them, and so we are a bit scared. And I remember when I was a child watching Doctor Who on the TV. Do you remember that? Uh, Catherine won't remember this because things are so technical now. But in the day when Doctor Who was really new... When you saw a Dalek on the TV, you darted behind the settee, didn't you? And you sort of peeked over because you were so scared. And I wonder 
if the disciples, when they were in that upper room and Jesus appeared before them, I guess they were a bit like that. Now, I'm not saying that the resurrected Jesus was like a Dalek, by the way, but the fright, that sort of, what's going on here? We've not understood this. We can't, we've not experienced this before. And so, they are very much like you and me, those disciples. They are very human. They are scared by the things that they see around them that they don't understand. And we are told that they were terrified and confused. I can understand those disciples reacting to what just has happened. To put that reading into a little bit more of context, the Gospel reading happened when um, those two disciples who had gone on the road to Emmaus. Do you remember the Emmaus story? The two disciples on the road to Emmaus just following the crucifixion. They were talking, a stranger came along, and the stranger was Jesus, but they never recognized him. And then they went to the end of the day, they sat down, and Jesus broke bread, and as he broke bread, their eyes were open. This is the Lord. And they scarfed back to Jerusalem. And they get back to Jerusalem and they get into the room and they're talking to the other disciples and this is where this reading takes place. Jesus now appears to them and they're all terrified. And so in that context, it wasn't just the two who had been excited by what had happened and telling them about the confusion, but now they were all believing these two because of course they might have not believed them anyway, but now this strange thing was happening to them. They were scared. They were frightened. They thought that Jesus was a ghost. Then Jesus does something to take them away from thinking about ghosts and ghoulies. A ghost, he says, doesn't have flesh and blood as I have. And they could touch him. Have you ever pondered that? that the resurrected Jesus, who could appear behind closed doors, he still had flesh and blood. This tells us something about the resurrection. The resurrection is about Jesus lifting our humanity from death to real life. And it also goes on to tell us something about the theology of the ascension, because when Jesus is taken up into heaven, he takes our flesh and blood into heaven. It's about humanity being redeemed. This is good, deep theology going on here. And what Jesus is saying, look, what's going to happen now is something that's going to give you great hope. Because this isn't a ghost going into heaven in the next days or so. This is humanity going into heaven, flesh and blood. And that conversation leads to some certainty amongst the disciples, beginning to be reassured. Pentecost was yet to happen, the pouring out of the Spirit. But at this time, their confidence were being built up, and they needed that confidence to be built up to go out and to preach the good news. They could now look forward to what was going to happen in the days and weeks ahead. And now typical of the church, the readings that we had today were out of chronological order. So the first reading that Judy read for us from the Acts of the Apostles actually happened a little bit later than the first reading. So have you got that in your mind? Okay? Because this is where we need to go now in order to see what the resurrected Jesus does in the life of the disciples. What was going on in that first reading where Peter got up and he gave this wonderful account? He had found courage. What had just happened was that he had gone to the, to the temple to pray with John and somebody had asked him for arms and he'd given him healing. He said, get up and walk. And that caused consternation. And now there was uh, Peter talking in confidence about the raised Jesus, this one who you have crucified is raised from the dead. And in a way, what Peter was doing here was that he was holding himself up as an example. Because if you remember, in those hours leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus, what did Peter do? Peter had denied Jesus three times. He was a weak, frail human being. 
And now after meeting with the resurrected Christ, he had this confidence to go on and proclaim the good news to the world. Jesus is alive. Look what he did to me. He has changed me from this weak man who, who couldn't do anything into being able to stand in front of you and to preach the good news. If you give your life to Jesus as well, your life can be changed. Allow Jesus to walk and to work through you. That's what Peter was saying. That's what the resurrected Jesus does in the life of his followers. Peter is taking Jesus with him into the future. And if you think about it, the ministry of Jesus lasted three pretty short years from the time he was baptised to the time that he was crucified. He did a lot in those three years, but then his work continues through his followers. And our identity as Christians are in Jesus Christ. If we're in Jesus, Jesus works through us. Do you remember the Archbishop of Canterbury a, a year or so ago talking about his inheritance and, and his, his parentage and how the, a big question mark had been raised over his background? And the press were trying to say, look, you're an illegitimate person, you know. But what did Justin Welby say? He said, my identity is in Jesus Christ. And that identity in Jesus Christ released him. And it releases us. It releases us into the power of God. And those three short years of ministry that Jesus had gone through and begun to change the world is now something that we get involved with. He passes, his, passes it on to us. The resurrected Jesus encourages his disciples to do that. And still, Pentecost was to happen when the Spirit comes to be with us and to give us that power. That's something that we can look forward to. And if you ponder that, God calls us to do an amazing thing. God calls us to participate in doing those things that are holy. Can you imagine that? What an old me, sinful old me, is called by God to do holy things. Now, I wouldn't call any of you rotten and sinful, but you are. But God calls you, God calls you to do holy things. And if you hand your life over to him, the resurrected Jesus works through you. That's a wonderful privilege, you know. And it's something that can give us real encouragement and hope to face each day. To know that the words that we speak, our actions, our thoughts, what we do, the people who we meet, all those things can reveal to other, others the risen Jesus. So let's be encouraged by that today. So a little recap. First of all, we can all be scared by ghosts and ghouls. Okay? Secondly, Jesus turns talk about ghosts into talk about real life. He was a real person. Thirdly, Peter and many, many other millions of people have had their lives completely changed after they've met with the risen Jesus, either in person or through the Spirit. And that has changed the world. And the fourth point, very important, we can be a part of that if we just give ourselves over to him each and every day. Let's be committed to doing that because I think the, the future's bright. The future's not orange, but the future belongs to God and we can partake in the good news if we just trust him and follow in his way. Shall we just bow our heads for a prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the loveliness of this day. We praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ, that he is risen from the dead, that he appeared to those disciples and gave them hope and encouragement, and that they were emboldened to go forward and to preach the good news. Meet with us today, especially as we come to communion, to receive you into our hearts, and let us look to the future in a positive and encouraging way. Amen.
Thank you for those encouraging words. Shall we stand together and declare what we know to be true? We're on page eight. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So would you take a seat? And we'll turn to our intercessions. So I'm going to use a response. If you would join me, I'll say, Jesus, Lord of life. If you would say, in your mercy, hear us. So let's just give that a try. Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy, hear us. So let's pray. We pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. We pray for our world leaders, that you would give them the strength, the wisdom, the discernment to care for their people and for your planet. We pray particularly this morning for nations that we know are in conflict. And we ask for your peace. We ask for your resolution. Particularly for Myanmar, for Yemen, and for Syria. But for all parts of the world where there is unrest. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry. We pray especially for families in this country who struggle with poverty and with food insecurity. We thank you for organisations like food banks who provide, but we pray that no one would fall between the cracks. And we ask that you would help us to find ways to give them generous support. We ask you to give us spiritual food and to nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life. Be with us and all who follow you in the way. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ across the world, that like the disciples in the upper room, we would know you in your risen glory. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. 
Let's take a moment of quiet for our own prayers for others. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. Particularly this morning, we think of Prince Philip and for the example that he set. And we pray for the royal family in their loss, which makes them like every other family. We pray for those we know who have passed away recently. We pray for those who are struggling with grief. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us and accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen. Thank you, Catherine. If you come, please stand. came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And so at a distance we offer each other God's love and peace. Peace be with you. That was good. It was really well animated. Well done. We're going to listen to some music now whilst I prepare for communion. So if you'd like to be seated uh, whilst we come to the preparation. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillsides are now reunited in bread and wine, so, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. 
And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sin of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people. And gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one. We'll share in one bread. Jesus, love of God, Jesus, bearer of our sins, have Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ, 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 keep you in eternal life. 
body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ. Keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work, he who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. The communion prayer. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise, that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we receive God's blessing into our lives. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Or actually, thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.